Welcome to the November 2021 Sky Report. I'm Patrick So. Daylight saving time ends on Sunday, November 7. The time of sunset will occur an hour sooner than the previous day, which means it gets darker earlier in the evening. This beautiful image taken from Sicily last month shows the crescent moon. Venus is to the left of the moon. There is another opportunity to see Venus and the moon together in the sky. On the evening of the 7th, soon after sunset, look to the southwest. Venus is about 3 degrees from the 4-day-old waxing crescent moon in the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer. On the 10th, the 7-day-old moon is below and between the solar system's two largest planets, Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter is the brighter of the two. Both planets are well placed for telescopic observation. The lunar meteor shower peaks on the night of the 16th to the morning of the 17th. The peak hour is from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. on the morning of the 17th. The lunids radiate from the sickle in the constellation of Leo the Lion. Under a clear dark sky, 18 meteors per hour are expected. This year, the near full moon will hamper observations. A deep partial lunar eclipse occurs on the night of the 18th to the morning of the 19th. The partial lunar eclipse is visible in the Americas, Northern Europe, East Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. The entire eclipse is visible from Los Angeles, California. A partial lunar eclipse occurs when the full moon moves part way into the Earth's dark inner shadow or umbra. The moon briefly grows dark. This diagram shows the movement of the moon through the Earth's shadow. At 10.02 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the moon begins to enter the lighter part of the Earth's shadow, the penumbra. The moon begins to darken slightly. At 11.19 p.m., the northeast limb of the moon darkens noticeably as it begins to move into the Earth's dark shadow or umbra. At greatest eclipse, 1.03 a.m., 97% of the full moon is covered by the umbra. At this point, the moon may appear copper-red due to the light filtering through the Earth's atmosphere from all the world's sunrises and sunsets. 3% of the moon's southern limb will be in the penumbra. The appearance of the moon might be close to that of a total lunar eclipse. The umbral eclipse ends at 2.47 a.m. At this time, the moon's western limb will appear darker than its eastern limb. And finally, the eclipse is over at 4.04 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The umbral portion of the eclipse lasts 3 hours and 28 minutes, while the entire eclipse is 6 hours and 2 minutes. Here is an animation of what the eclipse will look like hour by hour as seen from Los Angeles. No special equipment is needed to watch the eclipse throughout the night. Griffith Observatory will broadcast the lunar eclipse live on November 18th at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Here is the link to our lunar eclipse event page. Please join us for this special astronomical event. The eclipse takes place in the early morning of late autumn. At this time, the sky is filled with the constellations of the winter sky to the southwest and the spring sky to the southeast. The winter constellation Orion the Hunter is visible in the southwest. This long exposure image of Orion was taken by our telescope demonstrator, Anthony Perkett, who was up early morning last month. The bright stars that make up Orion's distinctive pattern are overwhelmed by the fainter stars. It is worth scanning Orion with a pair of binoculars. Don't forget M42, the Orion Nebula. It is one of the brightest nebula and is visible to the unaided eye. Looking south, Canis Manger, the great dog, is below and to the left of Orion. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, is prominent in this long exposure image of Canis Manger. Sirius marks the color of the great dog. About four degrees below Sirius is M41, 
an open star cluster 2,300 light years from Earth. The cluster is visible through a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Orion and Canis Major will be visible in the evening sky starting next month. Our moon phase is this month. New moon is on the 4th, first quarter is the 11th, full moon is the 19th, and last quarter is on the 27th. And that's all for this month's Sky Report. Until next time, cheerio!